My name is Mike Haig, and I'm the project director of a brand new operation called Wreck Hunters, aiming to teach the skills and techniques of diving archaeology on the small island of Utilla in the Caribbean. We are focused on the wreck of the Oliver, which lies in 18 metres of crystal clear warm water, a perfect place to teach diving archaeology, a sort of advanced underwater classroom. As a build-up to this course, what I'm going to be doing is running a series of presentations on the techniques diving archaeologists use to deal with the challenges they face in the projects they operate on. Now, before I come to the range of topics that we will cover, just a note of caution. A lot of these areas are quite complex. Most will require a risk assessment and should only be undertaken by trained divers. So, what is it we are going to cover? Well, we're going to aim to cover as much as we can in terms of the whole process, from the process of searching for a wreck to final excavation and the recovery of artefacts from it. So, looking first at searching. Now, in the old days, we used to put what was called a sledge behind an inflatable and tow a diver behind it to scan an area for anything that looked unusual. We soon discovered that the James Bond films were wrong and that anything over two and a half knots caused your mast to fly off. These days, of course, we use powered scooters instead. But we still will teach swimline searches and circular searches, which are excellent ways of locating objects underwater. But of course, these days we have more powerful tools. We can use ROVs. We can use metal detectors to come up with metal objects, perhaps the anchor of a wreck, perhaps the cannons from a wreck. All these are survey techniques which we can teach. Having found something, you then go into survey. Critical first stage. And in that you lay a baseline. You put down a temporary grid of some type. You measure in what you can see by triangulation. Again, the metal detector can be great for locating objects which will be of most interest when we start to excavate the site. You can use probes to get an idea of the depth of sediment over the site. This is the type of thing you can do in survey. And of course, drawing, photography, photo mosaics and video come into all this. Then, of course, on to excavation, when we start to reveal the wreck again. And here we have a more permanent grid, often of scaffolding poles of some type. We're using powered tools, airlifts, water dredges such things as this. We are recording everything we do. We are making drawings of everything we do. We are then using different pieces of equipment to lift important objects, lifting bags sometimes, but other things as well. And of course, all of this underpinned by safe diving practices, things such as the underwater telephone booth, underwater communications, and other safety features. All these things we will cover. So that's an idea of the whole range of what we're going to be doing. In my first video, what I'm going to do is to cover the area of lifting large objects, be they robust or be they fragile. But until then, I wish you all safe and enjoyable diving. Music